versus called Dreams of Mexico. It's been 12 years since I last visited you and seven since I studied you with any purpose. However, I live in 21st century America, a time when I can't turn without remembering your temples, your sprawling deserts, your azul oceans. Oh, Mexico, if only I had a flying serape, not unlike that serape that I bought for myself during that last trip so I could live out my Mesoamerican dreams to connect with those people that I miss so much. What am I talking about? I'm surrounded by mestizo friends. Although, can I call them friends? They're all my students, but I worry about every one of them and their families. One of them said, before he got to know me better, you wouldn't be able to live in my neighborhood. We're all Mexicans. I only look back with a sly smile. In fact, strange things happen when I have run-ins with you, Mexico. All my dancer friends are Mexican. Young girls, what am I saying? Women, 2021, pirouetting effortlessly. I'd never be able to keep in step with them, but they'd continue to smile sweetly as I tried to keep up. They are just glad someone is paying attention. However, I will not colonize you, Mexico, with all my projections of beauty onto your shores. The, there are reasons for places like Sunset Park, like New Rochelle, reasons that keep haunting me. Your horrors, Mexico, narcos and Zetas and Corredos, epic terror. Those things matter as much as any travelogue in my heart. Even if the situation is getting better, I'm really scared for you, Mexico. But there are scarier things on my side of the border. I scream, hey Trump, America protects women that you would lust after. Fuck your wall. <laughs> or have you changed, Donald? And you only want to block immigration of followers of Islam now. You block anyone, Trump, anyone from immigrating as long as they're brown. <laughs> then I have a very short piece. I'm going to uh, switch up my uh, romance languages. It's called Toi Extorette, and it's for my friend Marie. One. The suited bouncer stands beside the velvet rope of the strip club near my office whistling tomorrow from Annie. A song he most likely picked up from the commercial for that drug company that's on TV every night. The club advises its drink specials and superior buffet while also mentioning that you don't have to miss any of the NCAA tournament action. The only word that I can use to describe this scene is overstimulation. <laughs> Two, elsewhere in the city, a dog sits outside a coffee shop untied, waiting with more patience than I will ever have for its master to come out. Three, the woman in the red winter coat is talking to herself. I hear a lilted, vapid, yes, as she finds her way to an empty seat on a commuter packed F train. She looks like Paul Simon on the cover of his self-titled album. You remember? She has that fur hood keeping her from being able to see anything. No left, no right. The only thing she can see is the tablet in front of her. Thanks a lot.